hopefully we might get a ride up the hill in that awesome aero engine car. So this is the Romeo again. This is John Kinnear having a ride. It, that was not what I was expecting. I thought we were just going to trundle around. <laughs> that was literally yeah, like, it was, it was, it was it, yeah. my God. <laughs> That's caught me by surprise. Dominic Chenier. Dominic Chenier. Is that... Chanel with a C, C yeah, C H I N E A. Dom and cameraman. That's it. Look, here he is, the cameraman. Hey. <laughs> oh. Yep, just, just those the just VIP two passes. Stands. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thanks so much, you too. Look at these. Oh, Dan. Oh, my word, it's a Mustang. Yes. It's a little triumph. Oh, nice. Right, welcome to another video. We are here at Prescott Hill Climb. I've kidnapped Dan for the day. So I was invited here uh, by Dom from the Association of Heritage Engineers, which is very nice of him. I have never been here before, no idea what to expect. Um, all I know is there are cars here, Edwardian cars from 1902 all the way up to the 80s. Um, and apparently there is a track, there actually is a hill climb event going on. So this video is going to be a lot of action, a lot of racing, a lot of cars. We've got Dan here. We're going to be vlogging. We've got the GoPro. Look, there he goes. Love it. This okay. is going to be a good day. literally the second we walked over that bridge we've just been bombarded by a couple of people saying hello yeah. showing us explaining the ropes basically there's various different areas various different cars racing there's so much to see my the kind of my eyes are popping out of my head because like i want to kind of look around the cars but then they're also whizzing past me to go to the racetrack to have a practice and i want to see that there's too much to look at so this is held at the bugatti owners club so there's it's not just Bugatti's racing. Bugatti's apparently there are a few. Did they, what did they say? Four of them. And down the end, there's aero engine special cars, which I can't wait to see. Um, and then up the top, there's more. There's all sorts of stuff. But then also, we've been told we have to go into the Bugatti Museum, which is a building at the entrance over the side. They didn't tell me what was in there, but these two old guys just said, "Go in the museum down the end and look at the car at the end, and you'll be blown away." I've got no idea what's in there. Right. Can I give you one of those? Oh, of course you can. Yes. Access all areas. Yeah. Oh, I've seen. I was just like saying to Dan on the way up, I was like, is it just going to be a closed road and a, a few cars parked at the side in a lay by and upper part? I was like, I'd never been, no idea. So, no. So, as soon as we walked in, it was just like, whoa, this is. <laughs> And that's a Curtis. I heard it going early. This is yeah. that's the one that I'll be putting in mind when I build it. Yeah. And there's a, a young lad in his twenties that drives this, and he works on it and looks after it and everything. Good on him. <laughs> Jack, hi. Dom. Nice to see you, brave guy. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Curtis OX5 V8, used in World War One aircraft, really. Um, the car's actually a replica of a Pikes Peak Hill Climb car. You know, and it looked just like this and it had a V8 engine in it. Then it's disappeared and who knows what it was or where it is now. And this is a closest can be built replica really. It's very torpy. Being an aircraft engine, they would have only ran it a set RPM really. Yeah. So you're using about a thousand RPM, you know, you're only revving it to 2000. Right. That's but it. The, the amount of torque <laughs> that you get in that in that rev range is unbelievable. I'm only using first gear up the hill. Really? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. No, don't have to change gear. You don't have to change gear. Three speed gearbox and I'm don't get out of first. So you don't gear. have to check the cam and everything's the same from yeah, yeah. being a, yeah. Yeah it's just standard Curtis but like I say they were they were designed to 
run into just a small rev band because in an aircraft you've only got one propeller speed and that's where you sit. Dom, your speciality is metal work. Uh, yeah, well, it's kind of. I do a lot of metal work on the repair shop and in my own workshop for my yeah. YouTube channel, but I do other things as well, like design writing and painting. I kind of, a bit of a jack of all trades as well, I kind of get involved with being at the repair shop. We don't know what's coming in next, so we quite often have to think outside the box and turn our hand to something that we're not completely, you know, it's, it, it, we get caught off guard quite often. So I enjoy inspiring kids and people to get in to making stuff like this yes. and anything yeah. we can do really to sort of showcase the amazing people that build these cars and to encourage people to you know get into getting an apprenticeship yeah. you can there's other options you don't have to go through this school and university route there are other options out there for a career in doing something like this we specialize in pre-war cars so what do you do then, we? Is, is this you? Tip top. Tip engineering. Yeah. Um, pretty small firm, James Baxter and myself, we're based in Yorkshire, in Huddersfield. Okay. And we specialise in pre-war cars. We don't do bodywork, just mechanical. So engine rebuilds, gearbox rebuilds, axle rebuilds, um, anything like that. We'll do chassis restorations and stuff like that. Brilliant. Anything mechanical. Um, and is this your, your dad, your old man? No, it's just... Um, so you just work we there? We just work together, yeah. yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. What got you into doing that? We've growing up with vintage cars um so we used to go vscc trialing um right. growing up around it i went and did an agricultural engineering degree and did a bit of farm work and then thought you know what i kind of miss the massive engines and yeah what do, I, what do i want to do the rest of my life and here we are yeah I'm living the dream doing my hobby and living the dream you enjoy late. it oh yeah 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 have you got your own not really um you must want we, you must want one though oh. what's the dream yeah what's well, the dream i don't know there's so many different things. I mean, you look at the ERAs and quite into Nashes and like you say, the chain, chain gun cars are pretty cool. Yeah. But I'm just so fortunate that I get to drive some really cool customers' cars. So this is a customer's car that you work yeah, on? Yeah, is, isn't really, we've not done much work on this, to be honest. Mick's done it all himself and he's a bodybuilder who's also, he's built this car. And okay. Got a, he wasn't using it and he's, James has done an event in it and we've just sort of... Stretch his legs. Yeah, you, That's it. you know, it's for the good of the car. We get it out there, get it seen for him. Yeah, um, obviously puts a lot of trust in you as well, yeah. letting you drive it. So. Yeah, yeah, very lucky. Um, yeah, but yeah it's very, very cool. Drive some really cool car, very lucky. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a great industry to work in. There's so many great people. Yeah. That's what I found. This is my first time coming here. Yeah. So many people have yeah. said hello to me and yeah. said hello, and yeah. just coming over and chatting. Yeah. And I've got the, the peering under the, someone's bonnet. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. The people are the best bit about it. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, you know, we're all working towards the same thing, really. You know, it's just about keeping these things, keeping these old alive. things alive. That's it. As long as events like this can happen, it's yeah. Brilliant. Well, like we were talking about, I'm trying to find one of these engines earlier. And I know a couple of people that have got them sitting in their shed gathering dust, yeah. and it's yeah, like, yeah. yeah. yeah it's better doing something with it yeah, yeah, exactly. instead of leaving yeah, exactly. it sitting there to rot away yeah exactly. yeah but yeah no if tips off engineering if there's anything we can do to help you it would be oh without that i mean yeah. you'd probably be able to find me a chassis as well yeah 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 keep yeah, an like eye out say, get in touch and yeah we'll be, we'll be able to find bits like you say obviously you'll want to do a lot of it yourself and we don't do body work and stuff but yeah i build, build the body yeah. but i just need to find the bits yeah, exactly. basically to start yeah, with so exactly. no, yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. No, you and we're going to have a ride up in it. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that cart was just absolutely incredible. It's basically my dream project. Once I finish the Porsche, obviously, is to build an aeroplane engine car just like that. The early 1900s chassis with that Curtis OX5 aero engine. It's a, a, an engine that's been used in planes for during World War One basically um, and it's a bit of a thing back then it's quite era correct people would put those engines in chassis build a body around it and go racing for sort of land speed records for like high speed they're super high torque engines sort of low revving high torque so actually once you get into third it's such a long gear you get the top top speed is awesome so that is the dream one day to build one of those and jack there is 20 year old kid driving that car it's amazing, and he has, I've, t I've given him my number, I've, spoke, I've been speaking to him down there, he's gonna try and find an engine for me, because that's the first piece that I need. Once I've got the engine, then I can build the chassis and the body and everything else around it. That's inspiration for the day. And there's a chance, so I don't know if it's gonna happen or not, but Dom from 
Association of Heritage Engineers is here and he may have wangled me a ride in that car up the hill before lunch. I don't know if it's going to happen or not because there's all sorts of insurance issues and things like that. I, obviously they don't trust me, um, but hopefully we might get a ride up the hill in that awesome aero engine car. How cool is that? Austin Healy, Austin Healy, Austin Healy, Austin Healy. Do you think this is the Austin Healy Club? Another Healy. Oh, look at the, uh, the colour of that one's nice. These are like the J40s. No, they're not. That's a nice colour. Literally, of all the cars, we were just at the top of the hill saying how nice the paint job was on this car. And he's crashed it. It's fiberglass front end though, so it's not too bad. It doesn't look that bad. Oh, and the back wing as well. Oh God. Do you think we jinxed it? This is our fault. Yeah. Shouldn't have said it, should we? Yeah. Two. What's the issue, do you know? So this is a Nash transmission. But this is a regular monkey, isn't it? I learned what one of these is the other week. Yeah, so your four sets of chains, so that double dog. Yeah, it's go going the in that way or that way. The bell way. cranks jumped out the double dog. So it's stuck in, it's stuck in, the double dog's, the double dog's engaged and stuck in gear. Should be in there like that one. Yes. So that bell crank selector has jumped it's, out of the double dog. I see. And it's stuck, stayed in gear. So then when he selected reverse. So it's in two gears. He had two gears. So you're one. absolutely right. The yeah. first thing you said when it was over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That was not what I was expecting. I thought we were just going to trundle around. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally like, it was 
it was. Yeah. My God, <laughs> that's caught me by surprise. Okay, but this has suddenly jumped up the order of things to build. <laughs> <laughs> oh my cool, God. Aren't they? <laughs> so cool. God, I'm out. Oh my God, honestly, that was something else. I know aero engine cars are very, like very talky and not so many high revs. So I was not expecting, I thought I'd be slow, we'll just trundle through. It wasn't like a race, it was just a little trundle through. But my God, no, I'm, sh I'm still shaking now. It was like, it was absolutely terrifying. The whole, as soon as that engine started up, you sat in it, the whole car was just shaking and vibrating and I could not even see the camera's recording. There's no seat belts. There's barely a seat. You're kind of in like a little bucket seat and it's throwing you around, sloshing you left and right. Jack is a brave man. My goodness, honestly. You know what? It is time for that beer. Yes, please. Cheers. Clink. Clink. The next treat we've got is we're heading back down the hill to the very bottom. We're going to go to the Bugatti Museum. Now, about six people so far have collared me and said, Dom, 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 you need to go down to the museum. I have no idea what's in there. Bugattis are, I mean, I appreciate the engineering and the design, but I'm out of, completely out of reach. I'm never going to own one, never going to own anything with a Bugatti badge on it. Um, so I don't really know tons about them. Angela has promised us a personal tour around, and the good news is that Angela knows a lot more about Bugattis than either of us. Look at that, Bugatti Trust. I had no idea there was even a museum here. I couldn't film too much in there because it's a very small museum and, oh, hold on. I didn't want to give it all away, basically. So that was just a very small teaser of hardly anything of what's inside there. Um, they're really, really nice. Got like a one-to-one -one personal tour around. The staff here are so knowledgeable and so enthusiastic. There's everything in there from twin engine trikes, boats, um, cutaways of the engines, an aero engine, TVR. Recommend anyone, if you're in the area, come down to the Bugatti Museum. It's just, the history in there is absolutely incredible. I think that, that honestly, that vice with that table leg was the best thing I've seen all day. Can I ask you a question? Okay. Are you Don? Yes. From? The repair shop? Yes. Yes. So the engine crane, the Harvey Frost engine crane that I've just finished restoring and the Ranala is from Peter. So thank you. <laughs> you made it all possible. Well, at least you finished it, that's the thing. Brilliant, yeah. And what are you doing here? I'm scrutineering. I've been scrutineering this morning from, from uh, quarter to eight. Scrutineering for all of the, all the cars actually on the track. Amazing. Well, it's really good to see you. I'm glad you're well. What a whirlwind that has been. We're back in the car park now. The, the, the car park's just as good as the actual show. There's some amazing cars in here. Uh, we, I've had an absolutely brilliant day. Dan? Yep, good day. Have you enjoyed it? Was it worth coming? Yeah, it was. Yeah? yeah. We both were coming to this completely blind. Never been here before. Never been to a hill climb event before. And you know what? This has given me the kick that I needed to get the Porsche done, which actually was a hill climb car in America in the 60s. I've spoken to a couple of the scrutineers from here and we can actually finish it, bring it back here and compete in the Porsche. How cool would that be? Amazing. Will you come and be pit crew? I'll film it. We'll get John. Yeah. Honest John can come and be pit crew, yeah. get Ash involved. We'll all come back. Ash How... can make the coffee. Ash can make the coffee. Yeah, what a day. It's been brilliant. I've loved every minute of it. We will... Anyway, we're back at the car now. Back at the car. Home we go. Dan's made a purchase. 
I wish. Anyway, let's end the video. See you next time. Make sure you subscribe. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next week. Thank you so much. Goodbye. <laughs>